podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Researchers at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill have been awarded a $32 million five-year federal grant to develop ways to cure people with HIV by purging the virus hiding in the immune systems of patients taking antiretroviral therapy. Tackling this latent virus is considered key to a cure to, for, for AIDS. A recent international study led by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill has made a major discovery in the effort to halt the spread of HIV. Dr. Myron Cohen headed up the study and stopped by our studios recently to share the groundbreaking results. Well, Dr. Myron Cohen of the University of North Carolina, <clears throat> Professor of Medicine, Microbiology, and Public Health. Uh, you, quite, quite a great discovery you've uh, been a part of here recently. Talk about this uh, discovery. Uh, we were able to uh, undertake a randomized controlled trial where we randomized um, people, and these are couples where one person is HIV infected and the other partner, a sexual partner, is HIV negative. We randomized them to immediate antiviral therapy or a slight delay in antiviral therapy. And what transpired, and this, this was done in uh, nine countries, 13 sites in nine countries. And what transpired, or what we found, was that the antiretroviral therapy essentially uh, prevented the transmission of HIV to the partner. So it, it was a very definitive proof of what, we, what had long been believed, that the treatment of HIV can also serve as prevention uh, for the transmission of HIV. This is not exactly small news. This is huge. And with that, you're being asked to release this information uh, a little earlier than, than typical. Right. We had a very unusual experience uh, because these kind of studies, you, when you're doing the study, and I'm the leader of the study, you don't have any results. The results are blinded to the person running the study. <clears throat> and the study had been going on a long time. On April 28th, we met with the Oversight Board. The Oversight Board are groups of statisticians and physicians and scientists. They have the data. And what they're really trying to do is protect the interests of the study subjects. But they asked us on that day to release the results of the study to the public because they felt that the findings had sufficient public health importance. So only this summer will we have a chance to present our findings to the scientific community. So it's kind of an inverse of how it usually works. And with this, you found that a very limited amount of, uh, extremely limited amount of uh, passage of the HIV virus was going from... Right. There were 1,763 couples, as I said, in nine countries. Um, we were looking for transmission events. We, we had done everything possible. When you do the study, you first do everything possible to prevent transmission. You counsel the couples, you provide all kinds of, of safety materials, but at the end of the day, they were randomized to antiretroviral therapy or no therapy uh, the, for the infected person. And what happened was there were, and then we're looking for virological linkage. It gets complicated. It's not just the transmission we're interested in. We have to prove that the virus went from one person to another. So we need the pairs of viruses. Then we subject them to pretty intensive and sophisticated analysis. And at the end of the day, we saw a total of 39 transmission events. But we were mostly concerned about 28 events that were linked virologically. And among those 28 events, 27 of those occurred in people not receiving therapy, where the infected person was not on therapy because it wasn't essential to their own health. They were delaying therapy. And then we only saw one transmission event in couples in whom the infected person was receiving therapy. So that amounts to more than 96% protection from taking the, the antiviral therapy. So when you take the pills for your own health, which we also saw some benefit of, you're, you're also benefiting your partner because you're protecting them from acquiring HIV disease. And this is just so far for sexual transmission. Correct, that, and only the heterosexual transmission. This study was 97% of the uh, couples we worked with were heterosexual and 94% were married. So, you know, it's a pretty uh, selected population, but one that represents the normal spread of the, of the disease worldwide. So this is not solving the disease yet. This is just solving a possibility <clears throat> of the spread. Well, there, there, there are three. You're asking a really good question. Um, at the University of North Carolina, we have a pretty comprehensive program, and, and there are three things we're concerned about, really four things. First, how do we detect people who are infected? So 
detection is critical because we can do so much for both the health of the individual and public health through detection. So we spend a lot of time worrying about how to get people tested, and, and the state of North Carolina has been great about that. Once people are tested, then what do we do? Um, well, his, in the past, you know, we had no treatment. Now we have great treatments, so most people get treated pretty quickly. So we're very concerned about the best treatment. The third issue for us is prevention. We have lots of tools for prevention. We're working on vaccines and <clears throat> doing behavioral preventions, but the study we undertook demonstrates that treatment can serve as very profound prevention. And lastly, we have a fairly substantial cure-aids program. Now, that might sound impossible, but um, in the last few years, our, our colleagues and many others are really focused on curing HIV infection. And so there are four kind of comprehensive activities, all of which benefit each other. This uh, has, since this uh, study was international in, as well as here in the U.S., uh, this has a lot of implications for helping out people around the world. What are you seeing and what are you starting to do already to get the word out and, to, and, <laughs> and how do you think this is going to be in the future solving this problem in, yeah, internationally? Good, good question. Well, we haven't had to get the word out. You know, we, we uh, released the results to the public on May 12th and there were 21,000 news stories uh, about this, this finding, if you'll call it. Um, so our issue has, is, our highest priority is to, is to convey the information properly uh, about the result. And, and what the result shows is, is a biological event. It shows the biological plausibility of an in, such an intervention. <clears throat> but implementing it and, and turning it into public health policy is a whole other matter. Now, the UN will announce, will take these findings in, into consideration and um, probably in July change policy that relates to couples. Many HIV infected people find themselves in a partnership with someone who's not infected. So with these results the UN will make new recommendations related to how we should manage couples on a planetary basis. Now in addition you're asking about a policy question more broadly. How effectively can we use antivirals for prevention not just in couples but across a population? Um, we and others are engaged in studies to understand the population level benefit of, of these kind of findings. We're also concerned about people who first acquire HIV. That's called acute HIV infection. Those people are very hard to detect and they're, and they're quite infectious. So we're also looking at studies to treat those people, to find those people and treat them. So we're trying to develop a, a comprehensive strategy to use these kind of biological findings for prevention. Are there any other diseases that this is also helping uh, have some prevention or some uh, limited success with too? Well, I think as, you know, HIV in the end of the day is, is, is a sexually transmitted disease. So as we touch HIV, we affect all the sexually transmitted diseases. So we would hope, and we try and be comprehensive, so we hope that our counseling and our interventions prevent the more classical diseases, not because of the antiretrovirals, but because of the kind of attention to sexual health. Um, less syphilis, less herpes, less, less chlamydia, less gonorrhea, less trichomonas. We would hope for a, kind of a package of, of reduced uh, disease. Dr. Cohen, good luck with your research, and, and hopefully this is a great uh, solution for the future. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.